Hello, in this video we will discuss how to measure liquid permeability in the lab. Before we start measuring the permeability of a core sample, we first need to measure its dimensions as length and area are part of Darcy's law. Secondly, we insert the core sample in the core holder as shown here. Before injecting the water, we need to ensure that the confining pressure that is squeezing the core sample from all the sides is applied. This is done in order to guarantee that the water is only going through the core sample and not bypassing it as that will generate errors in the measurement. A general rule of thumb is to apply a confining pressure that is at least 1.5 times higher than the fluid injection pressure. Then, a liquid, in this case water, is injected at a specific rate using a pump. When water is injected at a constant flow rate, a wait time is required in order to achieve a steady state flow, where the inlet and outlet pressures become constant and do not fluctuate. After the steady state flow is achieved, we record the flow rate, inlet, and outlet pressures. We then move on to a new flow rate and follow the same procedure. After recording a few data points, we can plot the data in order to find the permeability of the core sample. If we rearrange Darcy's law for the liquid phase, it becomes Q over A equals K over mu P1 minus P2 over L. This equation is in the linear form Y equals MX plus B, where Y is the dependent variable Q over A, X is the independent variable P1 minus P2 over L, M is the slope k over mu, and B is the y-intercept. The y-intercept in this case is zero since the curve goes through the origin. If we plot this figure with our data, a figure similar to this will be generated. The slope of that figure will be equivalent to the permeability divided by the viscosity. In order to obtain the permeability, the slope needs to be multiplied by the viscosity. When analyzing experimental data, make sure you follow consistent units as discussed before. Darcy's units are the most commonly used units when analyzing laboratory data. For more information, check out my textbook and booklet on reservoir buck properties, along with my lecture notes, all provided in the description box down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.